One of my favorite games of all time is Samurai Showdown, and I'm here with the father of Samurai Showdown, Adachi-san. And uh, first of all, thank you for creating this seminal fighting experience, which really blew my mind. I was a big fighting game fan, like all of us that were into video games back then, but the weapon combat and the characters that you created were so cool and so addictive and people don't always know this, but Samurai Showdown was the first video game that was sent to the Electric Playground. Uh, it was a 3DO port, but it legitimized EP as a brand, and it was also an incredible game that my, I played with my colleagues, and it completely took us over. It was so addictive. So thank you very much. 3DO, 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 vision reality. <laughs> and it was Crystal Dynamics was the publisher oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. before they were bought by IDOS. It was a very interesting time. Tell me about uh, working at SNK in the 90s and creating games like Samurai Showdown. What, what, was, what was special about SNK? That was about uh, 30 years ago, so you're going to have to give me a second or two to, to recall what was so special in the 90s. <laughs> You know, for, for me, uh, I'm starting to remember, that was when I would get into a lot of fights with my wife uh, 30 years ago. Yes, yes, that's what, that was it. Uh, yeah, no, uh, all jokes aside, um, I remember going to the company, uh, didn't feel like I was going to work, I felt like I was going to play or have fun or, you know. I couldn't believe I was doing this as a job. Family life was sometimes difficult, and so it was nice to go to work because I was able to play all these uh, games and, and, do all, and do this fun job, and it was actually a good amount of escapism for me. There were already a bunch of great fighting games under the SNK banner. Samurai Showdown distinguished itself with its weapon-based combat. I'm wondering if there was a little bit of a rivalry between the fighting game teams. Were you trying to one-up each other? and uh, not just be more popular, but just be a better game or a more fun game? Actually, at that time, there were four different lines uh, of different fighting games that we were making at SNK. So one was uh, Fatal Fury, there was Art of Fighting, Samurai Showdown, and of course, King of Fighters. And while we were all making fighting games, and you'd think that there was a rivalry, and actually we get asked that question quite a bit, you know, did we feel like... Uh, we wanted to one-up the competition, so to speak, internally. It never really felt that way. At one point, King of Fighters and Samurai Spirits were developed in the same room. So we could look over and see their screens, and they could look over and see our screens, and we'd look over and we're like, ah, oh, that's a really dark-looking game, you know, using really dark colors. And then they'd look over and be like, oh, look at all the different blood. There's a lot of red colors in, in that game. And you'd think that you would feel there would be like some sort of rivalry or some, you'd have to one-up the competition, but we didn't. I was so proud of the stuff that they were doing, and they were proud of the stuff that we were doing. And just in general, as a team, we didn't really feel any competition. We just felt really excited to see what the other teams were working on. And so that was kind of a core motivation for us back at the time, as we were just kind of one big happy family making all these cool games together. One good example of the teams would be as if we were all running a marathon together. You know, you don't look at somebody next to you in a marathon and hope that they fall out or something. You all want to move together with the same momentum in the same direction. And actually, if you're going to take it a step further, we would look at companies like Capcom, Sega, Konami, Taito, etc., uh, and the games that they would put out. And we didn't even feel a rivalry towards that or a competition towards them. We're all together in the game industry running this massive marathon together, and we would see the games that they would put out and that would motivate us and you know we'd come back and then take that motivation that fire that passion and put it back into the game development to the point where it really was just you would motivate somebody else they would motivate you it was all one big positive energy that was all just used to making the best games you possibly could how big of a team was the original samurai spirits team yeah, so we started with a, a team size of about 20 uh, in the beginning. Uh, and then, you know, as we made more and more Samurai Showdown games, uh, eventually the largest size uh, of team was about 50 people. How did you guys know you were on to something? Did you create two characters and, and had them go back and forth? Take us into 
the, the, the early development and trying to figure this out because one of the amazing things about the game is that there hadn't really been a lot of weapon-based fighting games, especially in the arcades. Why was that? And then how did you know that it was working? So, back in the day, all that 30 years ago, my image of myself was that I was a god. I could create anything. I was the best creator on the planet. I was totally drinking my own Kool-Aid. Now I know I am a mere mortal. I am made of flesh and bone. However, back then, I thought I was a god. And during that time, whenever I would have a game design, I would imagine it in my head. And usually the way I would imagine it, we were able to create it. So being able to have this vivid imagination and then build out according to that blueprint in my head was a skill that I had. And in my mind, when I was envisioning the gameplay, it seemed very clear to me. And of course, we did do a mini prototype where it's one character versus one character. And sure enough, that ended up being very fun. As far as the weapon <laughs> combat choice goes, probably two big reasons. The first one is I wanted to emphasize what is the fear of combat. And of course, it's scary when somebody may punch you. It's even scarier if you're going to be stabbed. So the weapons take the intensity of the fighting game up in a major way. It's the fear of needing to attack, but also needing to defend yourself because the stakes are higher. So being able to do that with the game seemed like the weapon component needed to be an essential part of it. The second part of that is I've always been a huge fan of the traditional Japanese culture. So samurais and ninjas and things like that. So being able to make a game where that history or that culture could also be a part of it appealed to me as a creator. Let's talk a little bit about the characters. What were some of the, the first characters that came together? And you created such indelible characters like Nakururu and, and people that we've seen and loved for decades now. Did you have an inkling? Did you know that that was going to happen? So I'm going to slightly rewind the discussion uh, back to, of course, when I was still a god planning these games out. And believe it or not, Samurai uh, Showdown was initially meant to be a side-scrolling game. It wasn't planned to initially be a fighting game. And it was, you were a samurai and a ninja and you're scrolling along and there's a wide variety of different monsters, really, you know, big, burly, gross monsters, things like zombies and Frankenstein monsters and they come on the screen and you fight them. Uh, and to that end, since that was the beginning point of the production, Gan, who's the round green guy, of course, in the game, he was one of the monsters that you would fight. So he was probably the first character design that ever got created. Uh, but if you're going to, you know, say who's the first character design that we created uh, based on it being a fighting game, that, of course, would be the, the classic character, Haomaru, who is based on uh, a Japanese, uh, very famous historical figure named Miyamoto Musashi. He's your, your typical samurai uh, that most Japanese people would consider the real hardcore Japanese samurai. And then, of course, his rival, uh, Tachibana Ukyo, uh, in the game also, which is based on um, uh, another famous Japanese historical figure, uh, and when we, you were designing the, uh, the characters, was it your artist doing all kinds of renderings on paper and sort of defining every style that you needed and there were a lot of iterations and, and then you'd have to take it into pixel art and try to find your way to that happy medium? Or what, did it come together pretty quickly? We had a character concept artist on paper drawing out the characters in different poses. And then we had a pixel artist that would take those images and put them into pixel art. They wouldn't always fit perfectly, so there would be multiple back and forth to try and find what was the happy medium between the two different sort of art styles. Going to give you just a, one specific back channel uh, discussion that you probably may not have heard before. And that is every character was created through that process except for one. Uh, and that one is Earthquake. And because Earthquake was supposed to be so large and massive and have all this power, we created him in-game. And then I said, no! You know, he's at the time, Haomaru is about double Haomaru size. And he's like, no, it needs to be bigger. 
拡大ツールで。So、made bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger to the point where he wasn't fitting on the screen anymore. And then, of course, we had to dial it down a bit from there. But the point was, making him as large as the screen could possibly hold a character meant that you weren't designing him on paper, meant that you were designing within the size of the monitor. You're one of a very few. Developers on Earth. There aren't that many developers on Earth that that can recall their work being played for the first time in the arcade, and going to the arcade and watching people figure out their game and play their game and be excited and and have a big smile on their face and learn from that. Talk to me about that. What was that like to be able to go and and see players? Consume your game and figure it out, and and see their enthusiasm. We call that a location test. So basically, before the actual final version is released, you put it out in some arcades and you test it to see how people are playing and interacting with it, etc. Before you go into mass production, most of my memories of location tests were painful. Obviously, with Samurai Showdown, it's great because it became a very popular game, and you're happy when you have a hit on your hands. But the games I did before that weren't super popular, and I distinctly remember at one of the location tests, my game being right next. To a Gradius machine, and that game had come out you know, several years before that. Many of the high schoolers had come; they had put their backpacks on top of my game, totally blocking the monitor from view, and gone over and played Gradius. That, of course, ended up motivating me later that I had to work harder. So it led to a, a good result. But just seeing that, working very hard on something, and having somebody use it as basically a bag holder to play a three-year-old game、uh, was pretty painful. SNK was such a, and it remains such a cool company that has been able to cross over and do home, even though they were very expensive art cartridges back in the day and consoles,、uh, but arcade machines that you could have multiple games on. W- was that a special place, and was it received? You know, did other studios know how unique SNK was? Because it felt like a company. Kind of ready to adapt to whatever transitions the video game industry was going to throw at it. You know, back then,、uh, SNK was an amazing place to work because just about any pitch or game that you made to the company, they approved. Doesn't matter how crazy or original or wacky it was. Uh, so you got to make a wide variety of different, really interesting games that probably other companies would not have approved. 基本的には会社が承認を出していってくれて、予算をつけてくれて。So, you know, I think probably the, the reason I am the way I am、uh, today is because they had so much flexibility and really allowed me to feel out、uh, what it was to do to make a wide variety of different games. They really allowed me to be creative、um, back in the day. SNK was also in a point where we were transitioning with the home consoles from 16-bit to CD-ROM-based 3D designs. But SNK has its roots in 2D and so much strength in 2D. What was that transition like for you? And did the 2D fighting of Samurai Showdown, which kept improving and in through iterations, was it able to kind of You know, persevere through the, the, this transition to 3D, and were you happy through all that phase? I remember it well. It was Tokyo Game Show. We、uh, had just done Samurai Showdown 2, and、uh, Virtua Fighter. Uh, was being、uh, exhibited, and I remember seeing it and, and not being impressed. And I said, "Nobody's going to want to play 3D game, a 3D game." Now I know、uh, and recognize that as one of the three biggest mistakes I've made probably in my career was misjudging the power of 3D. Um, for us, have to realize SNK, Capcom, the art of doing a 2D game, the, the focus,、um, the technical skill that we had accrued over time. I mean, that was it. That's where the magic was. And these 2D characters, when you even think of Disney or whatever, there's a certain 
like life to them. They feel warm, they feel approachable, they feel like they have lives of their own. Um, and 3D at the time didn't have that. That was until Virtua Fighter 2 where I felt that, okay, now I get it. Now 3D games... I see what makes them so amazing. And from that point on, they continue to get better and better with different animation expressions and, and again, start to be imbued with different life. So it wasn't just the 2D games that had that life uh, in it. Um, and at the time, the company <coughs> probably made the right choice, which is to continue to stay the 2D track. As a maker, that was the right thing to do. But uh, when I started to believe in the 3D, uh, the 3D phenomena field uh, that we were going through, uh, traditionally as a company, what you want to do is you want to first, especially if you're making hardware, develop a 3D chip. You've got to have your 3D chip, your core technology. Then you want to build a team that's able to work in 3D uh, and has all the right tools to do that. And only after you reach that phase do you then come up with a game picture, a game design. Because if you don't have the other two things, you're not going to be able to do a 3D game. Unfortunately, I went in reverse. And in my mind, I could envision how this perfect 3D game would work out. And we did the pitches, and of course they got approved, and didn't have the teams in place, we didn't have the 3D chip in place. So we had about a year plus of of forward momentum trying to do 3D, but no scaffolding to build it out. And it basically was a year of wasted time of not moving forward. Uh, and so that was an incredibly painful uh, time where uh, things just did not work out. Where in the timeline was that? Had you already made Samurai 4 or 5? Whereabouts were you when, when you were getting into 3D? Yeah, as far as the timing of the 3D adventure that we went on was probably going to be sometime around the release of Samurai Showdown 4 and Samurai Showdown RPG. Again, this is 25 or so years ago, so pardon me if I'm a bit off with the timing because it's not easy to remember. How many Samurai Showdown games did you work on? How long did you stay with the franchise? If my recollect is correct, because Vic, you're asking stuff from a long, long time ago, probably you're looking at about eight titles that I originally worked on, but if you're going to talk about adding in other ported versions that other companies created and I oversaw the quality, etc., it checks on probably about 10. And I worked on them largely between when I was 26 and 32 or 33, so about six or seven years, was dedicated to Samurai Showdown brand. And then even after I left uh, SNK at other companies, I would present them, pitch them on doing like a PC version that we worked on. And so if you include that into the, my years of working on Samurai Showdown, we're probably at about 10 or so. Do you have a favorite of the Samurai Showdown games? Do you have one that feels like the perfect distillation of everything you dreamed when you were a god? If I have to choose one of the different Shodan titles I worked on, as far as fun goes, I would say it's probably the original. Because even back then, you know, it was a very well put together game and had depth, the combat was great. So to be able to work on them was just a lot of fun. But I guess if I'm going to choose my personal favorite, just as far as the one that feels the most complete, balanced, etc., I'm going to have to go with Samurai Showdown 3. And just as an aside, because I keep calling myself a god, I wanted to be very clear to the viewing public that I, in fact, was not a god. I thought I was, but I turned out to just be a delusional fool. That's what I was in reality. And I just want to state that for the record in case anybody on the team sees this and says, what is he saying? So I want for the record to state that, yes, I know I was not a god. What does it feel like? Because we're gonna we're about to get a collection, a new collection of your original work in 2020, 25 to 30 years later. How does it feel that we still love Samurai Showdown? It's still one of my favorite games. How does it feel to know that people all over the world 
love the work of, of you and your peers when you were all in your 20s. Samurai Spirit I guess one of the most important things that I think about knowing how long the game has continued, it's been a title where so many different types of people have worked on it. You know, eventually new people came in, old people left, it's been continually created by new teams and has continued to march forward as a very interesting IP. And so that's a great feeling. But Probably the best feeling is that even today, you know, the different people that worked on it, the sales people, QA team, core developers, we still go out and we drink and we hang out and we're friends. And so what that title did, and I think it's, it's fairly rare in the game industry, is it's been the connective tissue between a great number of very talented creators. Of course, it's nice to have people run up to me and, and say, oh, I love that game and compliment me. And of course, you know, uh, even my, my child loves it. And that's a great thing to hear as a parent. But it's the fact that this created a family and it's an ongoing family and it's a tightly knit family. And all that came from the development of this title. And so that's the thing I'm probably uh, most proud of, is that legacy of, of friendship between all the different people that worked on the title. We got a 3D Samurai Showdown this year, which was really fun. Did you have a chance to play it? And what, did you, what were your thoughts on the 3D Samurai Showdown? Yeah, uh, of course I played the game. I remember seeing the first trailer for it, and Hamada comes out and slashes the screen with the sword. And when I saw that, I felt that uh, Oda-san, who is overseeing the development, he got it. He understood the soul of what makes Samurai Showdown great. And I really respect the fact that trying to take 2D, the memory of 2D, the feeling of 2D, and convert it into 3D and still get the lifelikeness to it and still be able to, to have that same base core feeling is incredible challenging thing to do uh, going from pixels to straight up 3D character models. He did an, an incredible job. And not only that, you know, it's really easy to pick up and play. It's not bogged down with overly complicated systems and things like that. So a man uh, like myself in, in my 50s can pick it up and still play it and understand how to play it. And that's always nice. Well, the son, maybe he feels something different. I don't know. But when I play the game, it, it very much reminds me of the roots, the, the core uh, feeling of playing the original uh, Samurai Showdown. And so being able to achieve that uh, you know, with, with how different a uh, visual style it has is, is very impressive. One of my favorite uh, themes in fighting games is when we have the verses, the Capcom versus Marvel and the Capcom versus SNK. I would love, and I'm wondering if this ever was talked about or discussed, a Soul Calibur versus Samurai Spirits or Samurai Showdown. I think to make a 2D game and a 3D game would be incredible. Did, was that ever that idea ever proposed? Did you ever talk about that? As far as that collaboration goes, there were, in, you know, 30 years ago, two, two teams that I really, really were dying to meet. One was the Marble Madness team, and the other was the Mortal Kombat team. Because I just loved the way that they did the, the, the violent uh, expression, you know, and the animation and stuff like that. And so, in my mind, of course, this was just in my mind. This was not shared with anybody else. Uh, it would have been really cool to do a Samurai show. Down, uh, versus Mortal Kombat, you know, that would have been a very interesting collaboration back in the day, way back in the day, 30 years ago. As the father of Samurai Showdown, and I would imagine this is, could be true for many creators out there, there is an idea of putting yourself into the work. And I'm wondering if any of the characters in Samurai Showdown are a reflection of you or a representation of you. And if so, who are they? It's not visual, but my personality, I'm a pretty dark and negative guy. Uh, and, you know, there's lots of games, lots of colorful, bright, happy characters. That's not me. Uh, and so, probably if you look at, like, uh, Ukyo, or if you look at Gaon, uh, or in Samurai Showdown 3, Basara the Executioner, like, all of those 
characters are got some pretty dark sides to them, and I would say that's a symbolic of, of my personality. Is there anything you want to say to the Samurai Showdown fans, the people that have stuck with this franchise for the entire time? So, you know, I mean, first and foremost, thank you. Big, heartfelt thank you. Um, you know, I was a 26-year-old kid uh, when I did that. Fast forward to today, uh, I can go to Hokkaido, I can go to Okinawa, two opposite sides of Japan. I can go abroad. People run up to me and say, oh, you know, you're the guy that created uh, the Samurai Showdown. And, um, you know, that's a, that's a legacy. That's a that's something that could only have happened with passionate fans. And say what you will about the creators that make the games. It's the fans that empower the creators. Without the fans, IP will not continue. And we've had such a passionate fan base. They've been so great that they have kept the passion alive. And it's my dream that they keep it moving forward and that they come back and they say SNK more Samurai Showdown games this is an amazing IP we want more of that and they just let that voice and that passion uh, be felt across the company you know if I get to be at an age where that passion continues forward and more and more Samurai Showdown games are created uh, I know I'll die a happy man it's really, really very, very special for me to meet you. I feel like that game that you made that long ago, I can feel that direct line to it, you know? And it's, uh, it, it, this is a big day, and I, I'm really grateful. Thank you. Thank you.